Wow, it's time for another show full of tips and ideas from the sales growth leadership expert, Dean Akers. Known for his experience in hyper-growing companies and creating cultures for high-performance teams, here's Dean. Welcome to your Sales and Leadership Ninja Show. I'm your head ninja, Dean Akers, and each week I bring you one of my rants to stimulate your thinking in either the realm of sales and or leadership. Um, this week I'm going to talk about a, a, a topic that's very dear to me, and I work with a lot of companies, and I think this is a big value when you really tap into it, and it's tapping into your employee value. Now, last week we talked to all the executives or leaders or owners of businesses, and we were talking about how to leverage and get better return on your time by involving vendors to help you learn more, local university groups to come in and vet your company or give you ideas and, and or do business plans for you, and then peer groups. This would be uh, groups across the country that are like you where you share financial information. It could be groups with other C-suite or other executives or other business owners of similar size of different industries where you share ideas because basically all businesses are like so these three we shared last week and if you haven't listened to it i really recommend you go back to that show and listen to it but today we're going to talk about tapping into your employee value and i got to tell you this is really a big deal and when you tap into your this big resource you're going to find the secret sauce of making more money being more successful and allowing to, your business to let go and involve your people more. So I want to talk about it in the context of how do you do this? How do you engage? We talk about it in sales training all the time when you're working with customers, but it plays true for your associates. And what it is, is you have to learn to ask your team members great opening questions and then learn to absolutely shut up. And that means when you ask a question, you just shut up and you don't interrupt and you listen, and it builds trust the more you listen. The better of a listener you are with your teams, the more trust they'll have in you that you're really understanding and listen to them. Then, especially when you take action on their ideas, the trust even goes higher, their level of engagement goes higher, your results get better. So I'm gonna share with you three stories this week, uh, or a couple stories this week that, that are true to me that really set it, set it off for me. I'm going to go back to one of my clients years ago. We were trying to help them reduce costs. And the head guys were, man, we got to reduce costs. We need to reduce costs. And they kept beating everybody up, their people and everything, about reducing costs. And so I, I asked them if I could come in and visit with their team. So I came in and met with their team, and we had this big meeting. The head guy was there, and and, and we were in the tire business. And, and the one way to reduce costs was to have correct air pressure in your tires. And they even had a rule that you had to check your air pressure every day. And if you didn't check your air pressure, you could be terminated as a driver. So everybody's like, oh, we got to do this, got to do this. And we always saw the air pressure was off. So I had this big meeting. And I, these some of these drivers have been with this company 25 years. So we had this big driver meeting. And I started to ask them, I said, how important is air pressure? Well, to a person, everybody, all those drivers knew the importance of air pressure to the point that they articulated it so well. I mean, they were like, they really got it. And so as we went on and on about cost and how reducing costs through having proper air pressure was important and everybody was kind of going, yeah, we get it, we get it. I said, so help me understand what we can do to make this better. You could have heard a pin drop because I shut up. And the CEO was ready to interrupt and say, we're just going to make it a rule was already kind of a rule. And now, by shutting up, the real answer came out. One of the guys, one of the old drivers, raised his hand in the back. He was so nervous he couldn't see straight. And he was almost shaking and waving at me. And he goes, Dean, he said, we understand the impact of air pressure. We know we could reduce costs if we could get the air pressure done. He says, but we've said it before and we'll say it again. We're not going to, I don't want to get in trouble. And I'm assured him he wouldn't get in trouble. He said, there's no air chucks. There's no air. I go, what? He goes, yeah, we keep mentioning we cannot put air in our tires. There's no pipe out here. There's no way to put air in the tires. Wait a minute. 
So we start looking at, you should have seen the executive. He looked like he had seen a ghost because he was always screaming about it, but never listened to his people, never asked him enough questions, never shut up to find out what was really going on. And the reality is when I shut up and listened, I found out that we were blowing through tens of thousands of dollars worth of tires because we had not listened to our drivers who said, we need a method to put air in our tires. I guarantee you by the end of business that day, we had air chucks, air pipes, extra air hoses, and from then on out, our people who knew the value, said the value, the drivers knew the value, now took care of their tires and cost drop. Amazing. Uh, amazing. So ask yourself if you've asked those questions and shut up and listened and gotten their confidence for them to open up with you. Then I used to do a once a month deal. I would go work a crew once a month when I was a contractor. So it's one particular month I was working a, a, a sanitary sewer crew and I was down in the pipe, you know, down deep in the ditch with them working all day. And it usually took about two hours or something before they got comfortable with me down there. And I'll never forget one of them. I said, look at the city guy out there. He doesn't even know I'm one of the principals in the company, does he, guys? And they started laughing and they said, what are you talking about, Dean? They know you're the owner of the company. I said, no, they don't. They can't know it. I got my, I'm got. i just down here. They go, wait a minute, Dean. There's nobody in this hole wearing alligator boots and a gold Rolex. I promise you, he knows you're the owner. And I started laughing. It was a big yuck it up with the guys. They, they laughed and we all had a big time. But that isn't the story. So while we're down there, I start asking them, what could we do better? What, what, what do you guys need to be more efficient, do better, make our customer happier, be quicker, safer, whatever we need? What do we need? And I shut up. Again, ask the open-ended question and shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Don't tell them why it won't work when they tell you. Just shut up and listen. So it took some prodding a little bit and finally they all collectively were talking about this device that would cinch the pipes home each time this pipe puller device so i asked him i said well how much does one of these things cost and what would it do and they go well they're expensive and i said well how expensive well they're expensive and i said i i, I got that this is where as a leader you got to deep dive pull the onion back because their definition of, of expensive was different than mine they said that could be two grand what two grand the backhoe sitting on the top of the hill was a million bucks the front end loader was almost 300 grand the bulldozer was another 100 grand the the, the two foremen up there that worked for us were probably another 100 and something grand in salaries it was th this two grand was a rounding error i think we probably burned more in fuel that day the, with the equipment so i circled the backhoe to come down in the hole and pick me up i got in the bucket i went to the top i asked my two guys have you ever heard of this device they kind of looked at me and looked at each other and they said, yeah, yeah, we've heard of it. I said, would it help us? They go, you know, come to think of it, probably would. They never asked. Nobody's ever asking the team, how can we get better? The team was eager to get better. It wasn't like they were a bunch of slouches. And oh, by the way, these were laborers and they're interested in winning and getting better. So I, needless to say, our, I told the guys, you better get your button a truck and go get this right right now which we did and we went on to put them on all our pipe crews and made a big difference but more importantly it set more tone to the culture of our teams opening up and becoming a valued resource tapping into their value tapping into their value we did the same thing again with another company where we had a fleet of trucks and we were using these large one-ton trucks as we started really dissecting and asking our team what we really needed they suggested smaller trucks. Well, the company had always said, no, those aren't what the industry does. As we really vetted it, we found out that the smaller trucks were more economical. The drivers liked them better. They allowed us to, to get to our customers easier, and they handled all the payloads we needed with very few exceptions. And when we had those exceptions, we, bought, we brought a big, large truck. So we're sitting there. We... We, we, we've done the, the whole air chuck deal uh, with, the, with the air pressure where we now had guys where they were eager to fix their tires. We've, we've got a pipe puller and we have the right size trucks. Three random stories. I could probably stay on this rant for another two or three days, giving example after example after example of listening to our team 
And that means shutting up and listening, asking open-ended questions, and the way they can come out. So now if you're a C-level person or you're a manager of your location or something, I really recommend you to start asking open-ended questions, shutting up, and listening. Now, I'm going to tell you one other little story. It's not the same, but I was with another company, and every time somebody would do something, they would bring it to the to the two partners, and, and I was involved in the company, and they would always tweak it a little bit. So somebody come, what do you think of this? And they, well, you, could you change that paragraph a little bit? Now, they were probably right. The materiality of those changes were insignificant, or if they were, they weren't going to impact our company. But the minute they started tweaking it, guess who owned the result? They did. They took the result out of the employees. So the employees were always encumbered by their opinions versus that looks great, go do it 100 more times. So empowering your people to feel comfortable, empowering and tapping into this resources is infinitely invaluable. And I really recommend you this next week, just practice tapping into your employee value. So until next week, what are you going to do? You're going to shut up. You're going to ask questions. You're going to shut up and listen. And you're going to tap into that employee value. Have a great week. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. Subscribe today to our podcast and send questions or thoughts to help at DeanAcres.com. Also, visit us at www.DeanAcres.com to listen to prior shows and view helpful videos. Also, great tips to download. Thanks again. See you next week.